Welcome to the age-friendly Seattle virtual coffee hour. My name is Lenny Orlov. I'm with Seattle Human Services Aging and Disability Division. I'm the program coordinator at Age Friendly Seattle. Our goal is to make this city a great place to grow up and grow old. For more information, we invite you to visit www.seattle.gov forward slash age friendly. You'll learn about the eight domains of livability and other actions in our action plan that was approved by ARP and the World Health Organization. The Civic Coffee Hour is a tradition dating back over a decade, bringing community elders closer to local government officials to explore topics of interest and to become part of this civic process. In the past year or so, we've added live streaming of our in-person events, preceded by presenter interviews posted on our YouTube show, Age Friendly Minute. Full event recordings, including this one, are also available on YouTube. So we invite you to look up Aging King County, which is our channel, subscribe and enable notifications. Our events usually offer coffee, donuts, fruit, and take place at the Seattle Public Library's central branch. The library is currently closed, but remains our partner for coffee hours and other events. And that includes these online only presentations. We hope that right now, as you're enjoying your favorite hot beverage, you'll join me in welcoming Nancy Sloat, older adult programs manager at the Seattle Public Library. And I'm going to bring Nancy on to the live stream right now. All right, and just a second. And Nancy, if you would unmute yourself, you are on the show. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you very much. I'm so glad that you found your way to our virtual coffee hour. I'm the older adults program manager at the library, and I just wanted to take a few minutes to tell you about what's going on at the library. Even though, as Lenny said, the buildings are closed, we still have many ways for you to connect with us and to find our really great digital collections while the buildings are closed. Uh, Lenny, can you move that PowerPoint forward? Oh, oh I see it's not moving. So um, yeah, so here's what we'll do. We will, uh, let me, actually share the PowerPoint uh, real quick from from my screen. Sorry about that, folks. Let's see, we're looking for the SPL PowerPoint. Let's make sure that we're on the very first page. One second. OK. Getting back into the live stream and sharing the PowerPoint. It'll take just a second for that to show up. By the way, we are on about a 20 second delay, so um, we're speaking to you in a way um, from the past. Um, let's see, so here is the PowerPoint. Where are we going to add it? And wait, let's make sure we still have Nancy's picture I, there. OK. okay. Of course, we practiced this so many times. Um, but um, so at this point, that should be working. So let me go ahead and advance the PowerPoint. Yes. If real you could quick. advance the next. So mostly right. my message is that we are here to help you just as we always have been when the buildings were open. 
Next. So most of all, you can still find us, ask us questions and get information. You need to go to, you can type in www.spl.org slash ask, and you will be able to talk to library staff either through email or through online chat. We are working very hard to bring our telephone reference back. So check at the SPL webpage, www.spl.org to find out news about library services. Next. Right now, it's pretty wonderful that we have a really great collection of digital resources. Next. One of the things that you might be interested in doing during these days at home is to reach research your family. So for all of you genealogists out there, one of our great databases is Ancestry. Used to be that you needed to be in a library branch to use it. Now you can access that from home with a library card. Next. How about trying a new language? Would this be a good time to do that? We have a great database with over 70 languages to learn called Mango. Um, and it, it even includes English and it's for adults and for kids. Next. I know people will like this. We have some great databases that can stream movies. Canopy is wonderful, lots of independent films. We have another one called Hoopla. You can get TV shows as well as movies. For those of you who love music, Freegal is fa fantastic. You can actually download three MP3s, um, five MP3s a week, as well as stream music. Next. And of course, we have a really robust collection of ebooks and e audiobooks to check out. Next. If you do not have a library card, you can also get an instant library card um, to be able to check out our ebook and e audio collection. And you can go right onto our website and find that information um, on the screen that. Um, shows to your, uh, to the right on the PowerPoint slide. Next. We also have some wonderful services that we've always had. One is called Your Next Skill. For whatever you want to learn, let's say you wanted to learn an instrument, you wanted to learn how to play the bass guitar, you can send in a question to Your Next Skill and you will um, get a personalized list of resources that you can use. And of course, we will make them all online now. Next. Another great thing that we have, a service is called Your Next Five. Our library staff, uh, you will go to Your Next Five uh, link on our web page, and you can tell our library staff what you're interested in reading. Let's say you finished everything in your house and need a new suggestion, and you will also get back a personalized list of suggestions to read. Also things that you can digitally check out now. Next. And of course, um, day by day, we're bringing on more virtual programs. Next. We have a program for Financial Literacy Month coming up on Saturday. We also have a new set of programs coming up next week for adults over 50 um, live arts workshops that will be almost every day of the week, Monday through Friday. So look for those on our calendar on our website. Next. And I just wanted to end and make sure that you knew that it was easy to get a hold of us. And again, to give you that www address, spl.org forward slash ask. Thanks. All right, uh, thank you so much, Nancy. Um, thank you for uh, for this really important information uh, while we're staying home and uh, 
you know, um, trying to stay connected. And thank you for your partnership. Um, as I'm loading uh, the next uh, presentation here, uh, I'd like to start um, also introducing other members of today's broadcast. Um, so let me first uh, load uh, load the the PowerPoint here. And I believe it's showing the first page now. So back in our stream window. Let's see, I can close that one. All right. So as you know, these are unprecedented times and as we're as we're asked to stay home and stay healthy, it's important uh, not to only to be connected, but also to be in the know. Um, today, our presenter is Ann Shields, public health practitioner and healthcare consultant currently volunteering with Public Health Seattle and King County in the COVID-19 Community Mitigation Branch. I'm also joined today by my aging and disability services colleagues, planning and development specialist to Mary Pat O'Leary, RNBSN, and our primary care liaison, Fung Nguyen, MPA. Fung and Mary Pat will listen in and will be available for questions at the end. Also in our virtual studio, and we're all uh, in, joining from different locations throughout King County uh, and possibly not King County, wherever our homes are. Um, also in our studio is our Q&A moderator, Michael Taylor Judd. Michael is in the public relations. Um, uh, he is public relations specialist, that is, in Seattle Human Services External Affairs. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I will repeat it now for those of you joining us a little later. Uh, throughout the live stream, you'll have a chance to submit questions and or comments in the Q&A, uh, which is accessible by clicking the two speech bubbles with a question mark in the top right corner. Underneath the live video on the bottom right, there are options for enabling closed captioning, choosing one of seven languages and selecting such options as caption size, contrast and other uh, ways of displaying these subtitles. Michael will see your input in the Q&A and will respond uh, there, or he may alert one of us uh, and we'll get back to you during the uh, official Q&A period. So uh, at this point, uh, and looks like we still have um, uh, Nancy there in, in the video, let's, let's go ahead and uh, uh, send Anne over. Uh, let's see, and then make sure that your content is also showing. All right. Let me see that one second. I think I think we have to start. OK. All right. Oh, I, I, see, I see what it is. I'm, I'm pressing the wrong button there. OK, my apologies uh, for, for, for that uh, delay. Uh, of, uh, and now, without further ado, here's Anne Shields. Thank you, Lenny. Uh, everybody, I, can you hear me? Thumbs up. Thank you. Uh, Lenny, we, Lenny has been an amazing tech guy this past week getting ready for today, and I just want to thank him for all the work he's done to try to maximize Skype and our ability to talk to you in whatever language is useful. You can go to the next slide, Lenny, which is just my introduction again. Again, Lenny already mentioned that I'm a nurse by training. I've worked in many infectious disease outbreaks, HIV AIDS, H1N1, and um, I feel very much honored and happy to be back at Public Health helping out with COVID-19. Next slide. As, as Lenny mentioned, what we're going to do today is, uh, first of all, 
I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the key points in our governor's stay home order. And a little bit about what what ha what our local health officer, Dr. Jeff Duchin, has asked of us as well to make sure that COVID-19 has the least impact as possible in our community and within your family as well. I'm also going to talk a little bit about uh, CDC's new recommendation to wear a covering on your face when you're out in public and answer, we'll answer any questions about that and how to make that work for you. We'll also review a number of resources available to help you get through um, what's really an unprecedented time, um, very new and difficult time for many of us. And spend uh, the rest of our time together answering any questions you have um, from the whole team, virtual team here that's online and able to help you about any questions you might have about what I say today or other topics or issues that are coming up for you while we get through our stay home um, phase one. Next slide. <clears throat> uh, just a reminder about why this is an important topic for the Civic Hour. Um, folks who are older, 60 years or older, including absolutely healthy, active 60 year olds and on up are at much greater risk for severe outcomes. Um, by that I mean ending up in the hospital, having a real difficult respiratory uh, conditions develop as a result of COVID infection. Um, so it's very important for us um, as a group of folks, and that includes me, who I'm 65, who really need to understand why we need to act um, differently right now. Others who have underlying medical conditions in your family, like those with diabetes, heart disease, asthma, are also more prone to have uh, difficult outcomes and also anyone who's been weakened by cancer, say organ transplant, any kind of skin condition that's required radiation, any factors that might affect your immune system, um, as well as pregnancy, are also folks in your, in your, among your friends and families that might be at greater risk for difficult outcomes. Next slide. So the governor's stay home order is due to expire on May 4th. Although yesterday the governor um, uh, gave a lot of hints that it's likely to go on longer than May 4th. What the governor asked us all to do with that order is to stay home, stay healthy, um, and confine what we do to what um, he calls in the order essential activities. Things like getting to a medical appointment, getting your groceries, um, but maybe shopping once every two or three weeks as I'm doing instead of every couple of days. Um, restaurants are closed, so you might be able to go out and pick up takeout food for something special and just to get out of the house. Very importantly, we're all being asked to limit our visitors. And that is, I think, one of the toughest things for many of us. It's certainly the toughest for me. Um, keeping uh, your friends and your family um, um, outside your home, visiting them perhaps for a walk six feet apart, rather than inviting them into your home for a cup of tea, is hard to do and it's very hard to sustain that over time. But it's also very important that you not expose yourself or expose your friends and family um, to unnecessary, uh, the, the possibility of COVID-19, um, if you can at all um, do that. It's not on my slide but there's some new data to su that suggests that many of us have COVID-19 infection, but have no symptoms whatsoever. 25 to up to 50% of that is what the NIH, 50% of us is what the NIH currently suggests might have infection 
but have no symptoms whatsoever. So that's why it's very important for you not to um, think we can judge about who it's safe to be around and who it's not safe to be around. We don't know if we have that infection. We'll have greater understanding as more studies are done. But right now, what's important is that you keep six feet distance, six feet apart for most of the important people in your life. And uh, walks, exercise outside is okay, that's great, but keep that distance. Um, in my neighborhood, it's a common uh, sight to see people walking down the middle of the street. I think that's true in a lot of Seattle and uh, suburban neighborhoods right now because there aren't very many cars traveling. Um, when I see someone coming on the sidewalk, I very naturally move into the street, um, alongside the sidewalk, if or even in the middle of the sidewalk, um, and a wave and a nod and maybe say hello. I'm finding I say hello to a lot more people now than I used to, because it's good to see people even if they're 12 feet away from me. So that's just some ideas about keeping that six foot distancing and how to learn to just do it in a really natural way. So next slide. This slide is a little bit about why that six foot distance really matters. So just wanted to share this graph with you. Um, and I won't go into the details on this graph, except to say that that top line, that really sharp blue curve that goes to the top of the screen, that's what would happen if we were to continue business as usual, not distance ourselves from others at all, continue to have lots of visitors, lots of people in and out of our homes, go to restaurants, etc. We would see a, a very large number of COVID-19 infections. Over 25,000 um, we would have seen by April 5th was um, in our home state. Whereas that bottom line, that little red line that's nearly flat, is if we do a really good job of keeping our distance from each other, as often as we can. Washing our hands, all the things we've been hearing we should be doing differently. Um, that bottom line is when we're able to reduce our contacts so significantly that each of us really doesn't spread to more than who is infected, doesn't spread to more than one other person. Uh, next slide. So as I mentioned before, CDC just recommended that we all wear face coverings when we're in public places. Uh, some people prefer to call it homemade masks, face coverings, scarves, bandanas, anything that works for you uh, that covers, that's important that it covers your nose and your mouth and doesn't let any respiratory droplets out around. So most masks come down and come under your chin. So um, I made my I made my mask out of an old pair of pajama bottoms, and I found out the leg worked just right. <laughs> and it's I can cover my face. I made several for, that I use in my home neighborhood. Um, keep them clean. Wash them regularly. Make sure you're um, not touching them and putting them on and off all the time or you're still probably liable to spread infection. Now, what's the most important time to wear this? When you're out to the grocery store, you're in a crowded sidewalk situation that you can't go into the street. There's too many cars and people around. You have to go to the local pharmacy to pick up your medications. Things where you're going to be in a public place where you really can't control um, and have uh, that six foot distance in the way you can in your own home. So that's when this is very important. I have a website on the middle in the middle here that has both how you might sew or no sew instructions for doing your own mask DIYers. Um, and there are also many groups here in the Seattle area that are making masks now and giving them away. So you can contact us. Um, I'll have a phone number later if you're interested in 
um, getting a mask, but don't feel that you have the materials to make it yourself. Next slide. On top of the governor's stay home order, I wanted to also mention that we have a local health um, order in place. And this order um, really doesn't apply unless you are being evaluated for COVID-19 infection. But I wanted you to be aware that there is an order in place that says that if you have a test result pending, i.e. you're concerned that you might have COVID or your family's concerned, so you're being evaluated and tested. As long as that test result is pending, you need to stay home. If you can't stay home safely, um, there are locations in motels here throughout uh, Seattle and King County where you can stay safely if space is available. If you're home and live with many other people, try to stay in one room in your home while you're under quarantine. Um, keep that distance. Uh, don't share household items. Stay away from everyone so that you don't un inadvertently spread your infection while you don't know if you're infected yet. If and you do, yes. Um, we have a question that came in oh. from uh, Levi. Uh -huh. uh, he's wondering if you could go back for just a moment and explain taking off and putting on your mask and the risk of that continuing to spread the disease. Okay, great. Um, you know, the risk of that is really about what's on your hands. A big emphasis right now on really good hand washing. Washing your hands before you put your mask on, after you take it off, really anytime you're having to share anything with other household members. Big emphasis on good 20 second hand washing. Um, and if no, if you can't wash, uh, use sanitizer. So I think the idea here is that if your hands are contaminated potentially, then and you contaminate your mask, your mask isn't doing you any good. If you're touching, moving your mask around a lot, it doesn't fit right and it's not doing you any good because you've still got that threat of hand to face. Uh, remember the other uh, big piece of advice is learning not to touch your face, which is very hard for us, all of us really. So that's why, that's really why uh, that recommendation is made. Does that make sense? It's a really tough thing to do. It's very hard not to touch that mask if you're not used to wearing one. Um, the same way it's hard not to touch your face, but we're all going to be learning to, to do this probably for at least the rest of 2020. So. Okay, um, just back to this slide. Um, I talked about the importance of staying in quarantine and then if someone is positive, is able to recover at home, and many people, 80% of people can get well on their own. They don't have to go to the hospital. Um, they have to remain in isolation. So again, staying home. We have lots of guidance on the public health website for folks who have to take care of someone um, with COVID infection. But we also want to make sure that people stay in isolation for at least three days once their symptoms go away. And that means, say you're, I'll, I'll talk about symptoms next, so I'll go back to this. Let's go to the next slide. So let's just talk a little bit about um, those symptoms and how COVID spreads uh, through those droplets. This is a good slide to for that question about touching your face and washing your hands before and after you put your mask on. Because COVID spreads mostly through droplets or for a cough, breathing out, etc., and can also live on hard surfaces like steel and other kitchen plastics for up to three days. Um, th these are the these are the key things to keep in mind while you're trying to protect yourself. Okay, next slide. 
<clears throat> so back to symptoms. Temperature. So we, you can monitor your temperature even if you don't have a thermometer. If you feel very warm at night or chills uh, during uh, the night or the day, those are signs that you probably need to get a thermometer and start taking your temperature. Um, over 100 degrees is what we're, uh, your doctor will be asking you about. And again, we already talked about cough and sneezing. COVID-19 is what we call upper respiratory, sort of top of your lungs, not, not uh, the kind of infection you might see with a cold typically where your nose gets plugged up and you got a runny nose and sinuses. COVID-19 might have those symptoms, but most often it presents as a dry cough. And then as a shortness of breath, upper lungs um, are having a maybe a certain tightness in your upper lungs, um, where it just is a little harder to get up the street or even walk around your house. Now it's really important for you to recognize the difference between feeling just a little bit of shortness, chest tightness like you might with a bad cold or the flu versus whether or not um, your lungs are really changing and you're starting to have a lot more difficulty getting your breath or breathing. If you start to have that kind of distress, call 911. People with COVID-19 infection can get into a downward spiral with their lung function very quickly. So don't hesitate to call 911 if you start to feel as though things are changing and your shortness of breath is becoming harder and harder for you um, to walk around and function. Okay, uh, next slide. I'm not going to go through all these other ways to reduce your risk of infection because I want to I want to make sure we have plenty of time for questions here. The one uh, the one thing on this slide though I do want to talk about is uh, the cross up in the left corner. Do not go to the emergency room. That's not the place you want to be right now. If you have uh, first of all, if you don't have COVID and you go to the emergency room, that's a great place to get it right now. So try to stay out of the emergency room. Call 911. They can help you assess the situation and decide. They'll tell you if the emergency room is a, a place to go or not, or if an ambulance or other measures to take. Um, hopefully you've already connected with your primary care provider or if you don't have a primary care provider, call public health and I'll have those phone numbers later and we'll help you find a public health center to, to help you sort out what you should do. Uh, if you do have COVID-19 in the emergency room, well, there will be a lot of other people there as well with COVID-19, but it's probably not the best place to start to get the care you need right now, okay? So uh, I'm going to skip the rest in the interest of time and go to the next slide, Lenny. Um, cleaning, disinfecting all the surfaces, the things that you touch a lot in your home. Um, not that many of us live alone um, or if you do have the home care worker or other visitor who's in because they're working with you um, and they're as an essential service provider, just important for you to just keep cleaning things, washing your hands, but also doorknobs, door handles, uh, kitchen surfaces, anything that all your household members are using. You can use just typical household cleaning products. That will, that's sufficient, but it's important to really um, up the ante and clean those much more frequently than you're doing right now. Next slide. Keeping in mind what just keeps you healthy anyway, even if we weren't uh, in a stay at home order right now, 
keep it, keeping this in mind is not only going to help you feel better in the long haul, should you get COVID infection, it's going to, you're going to be in a better place to withstand that infection without poor outcomes. So keep eating healthy meals. Get a lot of sleep. That not only helps your immune system, it really, you know, really keeps you in good shape should you be exposed. Mindfulness, stretching, yoga, um, figuring out ways to stay engaged with others on the phone, um, through the internet, meetings like this, uh, those are really important. And so there's a nice picture here I like of a neighbor dropping off some food for someone. And we've seen some wonderful neighborhoods, uh, neighborhood uh, activists get organized. Um, in my own neighborhood, we have several folks who, um, who are well on their way to 100 years of age, and all of us are shopping for them, dropping off food, um, making sure that they're well taken care of, and don't have to go out except for some exercise unless they choose to. Next slide. There are several call centers that can help you out. Um, the King County Call Center, it's open to eight to seven every day. It's staffed by nurses like myself. Um, in fact, I spent probably 10 days on the call line before I um, uh, switched gears and am working with other groups now. Um, also, uh, medical doctors, they don't give you uh, medical advice. It's not like a nurse consultation line that your primary care provider might offer, but they can walk you through uh, the typical symptoms and help you evaluate whether it's time for you to ask for a test um, and, or get in contact with your primary care provider. So they can be very helpful that way, as well as any other questions you might have. So this is a great first line resource for you to take advantage of if you have any uh, questions or concerns. Uh, next slide. Oh, and just to add that interpretation is available. Uh, let's go to two slides. Next slide, I'm going to just talk about a few resources um, just to make sure everyone is aware that um, there are utilities, water surface, Water uh, service is not being disconnected now for non-payment. Uh, Puget Sound Energy also no disconnection if you can't pay. No late fees right now. Um, they're happy to work with customers about payment options and bill extensions. If you've had a change in your income um, in your household and things are really tight right now to cover your basic household expenses. Also, all of our internet carriers have uh, been willing to work with their customers. They're not disconnecting internet service. In fact, they're increasing many, uh, some of them are increasing the level of service available at no cost, but they're all happy to work with you on a, a plan for billing in the future until things get a little bit more normal. Um, next slide. And you might have other problems, rent, mortgage, other bills coming along. We just opened up just a few days ago uh, the new rent. There was a program opening up to help people with their rent this month. The rent assistance program, I understand, was all slots available were taken very, very quickly. The demand for that is very high. So I know the city and King County are looking at ways to make more rent assistance available. And we'll have information about that um, on, on the public health website as well as other, other websites soon. If you uh, are having difficulties with paying rent, contact your lender. Um, your landlord may or may not decide to help you out, but many will help you out right now. They might work with you on a payment plan or some other kind of agreement um, to help your household um, stay, stay put uh, and uh, figure this out over the next few months as things develop. Uh, be sure to put any agreements you might make with your landlord in writing. 
uh, it's really important for you to just explain your situation, ask about programs that might be available to help you cover um, or stretch out your payment um, or costs if you need to do that. Also, credit card companies can help you out by waiving fees. Um, now, they're not likely to do that unless you ask. Uh, they are, of course, credit card companies, so it's going to be important for you to uh, make the ask, um, ask for that delay or adjustment or to skip some payments until your household income is where it needs to be again. Okay. Next slide. And uh, finally, just wanted to talk a little bit about coping with stress. This is a terrifically stressful time. Not only are we be, being asked to stay away from other people differently than we've ever done before, um, uh, but we've also got financial pressures potentially that we haven't had before. So uh, many organizations, uh, both neighborhood organizations and also um, and the housing authorities and the senior centers are doing phone outreach, um, wellness checks um, in many of our communities and neighborhoods right now. Um, if you're not plugged in or getting or feel like you need to, would, let, would really appreciate having that kind of connection, um, uh, contact your local senior center or the, uh, the phone number and uh, website down below for community living connections. You can call that number 1-844-348-5464 and they can help you uh, get connected to, to someone who can help help stay help you help you stay in touch, stay connected um, in a way that maybe isn't happening right now and might help you out. They could do that for you on a weekly basis or less often. So feel free to make that connection and explore what kind of support we can offer. We do have a behavioral health task force right now that's developing a plan to offer phone based or um, computer like what we're doing now, sort of virtual counseling and support and follow up for people that might be struggling with uh, depression or anxiety or other concerns. So we'll make sure that the Civic Hour makes that information available as that plan is put in place. So you'll know how to request those kinds of services if they're useful. Next slide. That's it. So we've still got some time left for questions um, or comments. And, uh, and uh, remember, it's not just me here, but we have Mary Pat and others as well who can um, also help respond about any resources or concerns. All right, uh, thank you so much, Anne. Um, sure. Michael, do we have... Uh, any uh, specific questions for any specific uh, uh, persons here? Uh, either um, Anne, Mary Pat, Fung, or maybe for Nancy, who is still uh, with us uh, in our virtual studio. Uh, no questions in the uh, Q&A at the moment. A uh, reminder to folks, if you want to type something in uh, at the bottom uh, on the toolbar, you should see a little sort of what is those screens, books, whatever with a question mark and that will open up the live event Q&A window for you. That's great. And and since, um, uh, you know, did did uh, Mary Pat or Funk, did you want to add anything? I know we talk about um, staying informed, staying connected, but also staying resilient. Is there, um, if there is something that you would like to um, speak to I, I can I can put you on the stream right now. Uh, Lenny, this is Mary Pat. Hey, Mary Pat. Hi. Can you? Yeah, we, here we go. Okay, if you can, if we can get your uh, video, then uh, I can I can go ahead and send you send you over to live there. Here we go. On to 
say thank you to Nancy and Anne. And so I'm in the process of trying to put together an article on nursing for the month of May. Uh, it's Appreciation Month, and I do think we are nurses and our healthcare providers, you know, a great debt gratitude. And resilience is um, really important. I, what we can do is the plan you can hear positive comments and so, stories. Mary Pat, I'm sorry and, to interrupt, um, but uh, your audio is uh, is breaking up. Uh, and I'm wondering if um, we can. What else? Can you what, hear what? me? Yes, um, and I think you're back on. So, uh, can you repeat what you uh, the last couple of sentences that you just said? Internet aging and disability services tries to support each other by telling positive stories, sharing positive stories. And also the importance of laughter. Some, um, if most people know that I'm a, a master trainer, and one of my quotes is that I share: everyone can have one good minute, one good hour, or one good day, even uh, in this pandemic. Thanks, Anne. I see Anne's point that. We need to remind each other that we have a good minute, today, a good hour today, or an excellent day. We have a lot to be grateful for. I think I've seen much heroism amongst people looking out for each other, and that is part of resilience: is getting out of ourselves and helping others. Fong, did you want to say anything? Hi, can you hear me? This is Fong speaking. OK, great. Yeah, um, so I would I would like to add that as uh, my role as a primary care liaison, um, I help connect, um, you know, uh, our community with information um, and did mention about uh, contacting our community living connections. But if you have any issues uh, with um, with just uh, navigating uh, community resources, um, getting information, uh, getting your answer, uh, getting your questions answered, um, I'm happy to troubleshoot with that as well. Um, and so please feel free to reach out to me as well as a resource. All right, thank you so much, Fang. Do uh, folks have any other questions at this time? Anne mentioned about the masks, and I hope you can hear me. I'll try and see if I can do this. Uh, one second. Here we go. Now I'm sending you live on video, uh, Mary Did Pat. Did you okay. see me? Can you can you Did can you, you do that me? again, please? Absolutely. Go ahead and uh, uh, try that again, please. Well, Mary Pat's. Lenny, can you still hear me? Yes, and so can the audience. All right, good. Um, while, Mary, while Mary Pat's doing that, I'll just add that um, even an old T-shirt that's mostly cotton, you can make a mask out of many resources. Um, but I'm, I'm glad to have a live demo, Mary Pat. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you. I. I really think a lot of people, this is one of the things we're working on um, with aging and disability services is that a lot of people, um, Anne and I know this because we're, we're nurses, but a lot of people have gotten away of putting on gloves and masks and gowns for infections. 
And so, um, as Anne so eloquently said, you can have a mask, but then if you take it off and you grab your face uh, with your hands that aren't clean, then you're contaminating your face. And as Anne said about the aerosol, then you're breathing in the respiratory droplets. So that's why it's really important. Wash your hands before you don the mask, put it on, put it on, carefully take it off, whatever you use, your own um, handmade mask, and then your hands washed afterwards. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mary Pat. Um, so I see a comment in the Q&A, is the point to use sanitizer before and after using a mask? Yes, good idea. Yes, good idea. I'm, I'm a big fan of hand washing myself, but whatever you've got handy, uh, sanitizer, if not a sink, um, um, really wash those hands well and clean, the, clean every surface well. There's one other thing, if we don't have any other questions, uh, there's a question about uh, Fong's role. Did that get answered sufficiently? What is Fong's role? I think she I think spoke to that. Any, any more you'd like to add, Fong? Uh, yes, sure. I can um, talk a little bit about my role. Um, so my role as a primary care liaison is to um, connect and share um, community resources uh, about aging and disability services um, in Seattle and King County. Um, this can be for um, helping uh, a resident connect to resources or a primary care provider or hospitals or even a community service providers. So connecting, navigating resources in our community and um, helping with the referral processes um, as well as troubleshoot any um, of those uh, process uh, from beginning till the end until people get what they need. Thank you. And we have one time for one more question uh, and I see a question there in the Q&A. Um, can you use a weak bleach solution as disinfectant? Who would like to take that? And would you like to? Sure, yes, you can. In fact, bleach is cheap and effective. And um, we have information on the public health website about um, how to dilute bleach um, and use it in that way. And uh, perhaps Mary Pat remembers, I, I don't want to quote the dilution because I'm not sure I've got it right in my head, but you can find great information about how to use bleach both at the public health website and also CDC website provides that. So. And All right, thank just, you so much. Anne. I would just, yeah, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. This, so other thing that I, I wanted folks to know is that uh, Maria Langley and myself, we participate in the older adult force with King County and participates in that. And we also work with the disability committee. So if you are hearing things, you have concerns, you would like information pushed out, just let us know. We're happy to raise that up to that level. Also wanted to let you know we haven't yet started getting care coordination clients, but I am working with Kelly Ross Pharmacy to help us address the medication um, accessibility for older adults, and that includes King County Housing Authority, SHA, and others. So just letting folks know we're here for you. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you, Mary Pat. Thank you, Anne Fung, and, and of course, Nancy, uh, for all this great information. So, um, in closing, um, first of all, thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, bearing with us through some technical difficulties. This is our first uh, ever live only event. And, um, uh, you know, if you would like, let's say one of your friends couldn't uh, join us live, but would like to hear this information 
um, and, 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 and see, see the presenters, uh, they can view the recording of this event. And to do that, we invite you to subscribe to the Aging King County YouTube channel, which is at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Aging King County. Uh, and click the bell to be notified when the video is uploaded. In the meantime, we would appreciate it uh, if you could provide us with some feedback on today's event. Uh, it should only take about two minutes to complete, um, and it's an online survey uh, via SurveyMonkey, and that's surveymonkey.com forward slash r forward slash April 2020 coffee, and that should be posted in your Q&A shortly. Um, I would like to note that at the outset of 2020, we did set out to bring the in-person coffee hour events that usually take uh, at the downtown library to more communities around Seattle, especially to immigrant and refugee elders. And our vision with that was to broadcast these live events um, online um, so that community centers, senior centers, and community organizations that serve Seattle's diverse communities would offer screenings uh, right there in Seattle's neighborhoods where folks that uh, speak the language of participants could be present and make these presentations culturally appropriate. Hopefully today, um, you know, the, the artificial intelligence version of uh, interpretation was in a way sufficient uh, for those of you who uh, uh, who took advantage of it. And for that vision, for for bringing, uh, for, for making um, language access available uh, sort of digitally, we partnered with a team of undergraduate students at the UW Information School. Uh, there, the team is called the Seattle Streams uh, and the students' names are Madison Laughlin, Adrian Ionescu, Mikias Lima, and Tristan Maselli. Um, this is part of a capstone project for uh, the information school, um, and uh, we will be rolling it out. So next time, this experience may be, um, you know, uh, enhanced by the efforts uh, of these uh, students. So, so thanks to them as well. And as you saw on one of Anne's slides. Um, Community Living Connections is a network of organizations in Seattle's neighborhoods that uh, is available to assist during COVID-19 and in other times. So with any aging or disability issue, you are welcome to contact Community Living Connections by calling 1-844-348-5464. Again, 1-844-348-5464. Or by visiting them on the web at www.communitylivingconnections.org. Thank you so much for being here. Please stay home, stay healthy, and stay connected. We'll see you all next month. These events happen every third Thursday of every month. And there may be other ways we'll be connecting with you uh, in this format. So please stay tuned. And for more information, uh, you, you can email agefriendly at seattle.gov. Thank you and have a good day.